Hey, Excel Youth, what is up? My name is Pastor Aaron Holt, and I probably met some of you at camp uh, a couple summers ago, and uh, that's where I met your youth pastor, Pastor Joey Silva. In fact, he's such an amazing guy. He's just awesome. I love him so much. And uh, so I'm excited to be able to share with you tonight through this video. But uh, hey, if you don't know me, just a little bit about me. So my name is Aaron. Yep, that's pretty cool. I think so. Um, and uh, I grew up here in Pittsburgh. Go Pittsburgh. Go Steelers. Although the last two weeks haven't been really so great. But hey, we're still doing all right, right? Right. We're like 11 and 2 or something like that, right? Um, and uh, let's see what else about myself. Oh, um, I'm the baby of the family. Yes, baby of the family. How many of you are the baby of the family? If you are, just drop it in the chat right now on whatever platform you're watching on because the Bible says the babies of the family are the best members of the family, the most blessed members of the family, the best looking members of the family. Yep, there it is. I said it. Uh, if you if you find that in the Bible, uh, text me real quick and let me know where it's at because I haven't found it yet. But, um, but I was the baby, which also means I had two older sisters so yeah i mean they're okay i guess but mm, not not the best but uh let's see a little bit more about my life um when i was a kid i wanted a dog because dogs are awesome but my dad bought me a cat mm -hmm, not good at all and then the cat got stuck in a fox trap and had to have a leg amputated so it was a three-legged cat so mm, not going the right way but later in life i did get a dog and now I went to a great church here in Pittsburgh when I was like, I don't know, maybe 14 or 15. I had my first girlfriend. Yeah. All right. And then we broke up. Um, but then we got back together. Um, and then we broke up again. So I don't know. Eventually, I went to college and I played basketball in college, which was tons of fun. And I met my wife, Julie, in college. That was amazing. Like, she deserves, like, a whole bunch of goodness right here, right? Um, and mm, eventually, we broke up, too. Um, but we, we got back together. So I guess there's a pattern there. Um, maybe I should do a whole message on dating someday. But not today. We're not going to talk about that today, right? So... Fast forward, life is good, right? Get married, having kids, doing great stuff, having lots of fun. Uh, and then one day I got fired, so that was terrible. Um, but, you know, we had two kids, that was amazing. Um, but then my wife had a miscarriage, and that was terrible, right? Um, and so, like, life is like a mix of good, right? And then life is like a mix of bad, right? And, like, your life is like this and my life is like this and everything can be good. And even in 2020, right? Like, one of my kids got married this year, my son and my daughter graduated from high school, which was great. And then this thing called COVID hit. And it's just like, you know, forget it. Like, this is crazy, right? So here's the point. This is life right? Like this is life for me. Um, this is life for you. Like there's some good and sometimes it's like a lot of good. And then, and then there's bad. And sometimes it's like a lot of bad. So here's what I want to do. I, I just want to talk a couple of minutes, um, about life, about your life, about my life, about how we handle it. Um, and, and really kind of like what God's word has to say about how you deal with the ups and downs of life. Uh, how you deal with the highs and lows, how you deal with the good and the bad, how you deal with like the hills and the valleys, so to speak, right? And here we are, we're in December, um, getting close to Christmas. And, you know, for some people, Christmas is this. It's just, it's all this and nothing but this. And for other people, it's like, no, Christmas is this for me. Like Christmas is too much time with family and, you know, too much driving around and trying to, you know, meet with mom, dad, stepdad, stepmom, and just trying to figure all the family dynamics out. Like there's a lot of different feels out there when it comes to Christmas and how we all respond to it. But this is life for all of us, really. A little bit of good, a little bit of bad, all mixed together. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to give you three things 
um, that are going to kind of help you process your life and, and also kind of help apply some of God's word to it, right? And here's what I'd encourage you to do on whatever platform you're watching this on, whether it's on Insta, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, um, you'll remember this a lot better if you just type the points into the chat. They're real simple. They're real quick. But if you type them into the chat, you'll kind of encourage everyone else who's watching at the same time you are uh, as well as it'll kind of help you remember. So here we go. How do we deal with this right here? Because you've got this and I've got this. How do you deal with this? Okay, number one, type this in the chat. Embrace the mix. Embrace the mix, right? You and I have to learn how to embrace the mix. Why? Because this is life. You know, you win some, you lose some. You make the team, you don't make the team. You set the record uh, for something great you did, you set the record for something bad you did. You pass the test, you fail the test, right? Um, the family's coming together, the family's splitting apart. I mean, this is this is life, not just your life as a student, mind you. Like, this is my life as an adult. Three kids, a dog, married 20 plus years. Like, learn how to embrace the mix. And you know, one of the things that I find a lot of encouragement in, um, when I look at my problems, right? I mean, like, like I can choose to look at the problems. I can choose just to focus on everything wrong, everything bad that's happened in my life. Um, but I can also choose to focus on everything that's great, right? Like I say it like this, like, like I've got hundreds of problems, but I got thousands of blessings. Um, I might have thousands of problems, but I probably have millions of blessings, right? And so when I learn to embrace the mix, I'm reminding myself of something that Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus said, I've told you these things so that in me, you might have peace, right? Peace. Oh, that's good. Peace. Like I, I need more peace in my life. Well, Jesus said, I've, I've told you everything I've told you. Up until this point, I've told it to you so that you'd have peace. Now, why does he say that? Because because the next the next couple words say this: In this world, you will have trouble, 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 trouble. You'll have trouble, but take heart. This is Jesus. He's still speaking. He says, "Take heart, because I have overcome the world." And so, when I embrace the mix. I'm embracing what Jesus said in John 16, 33. I'm embracing that Jesus has already overcome all the challenges in my life on my behalf. He's already overcome them so that he could give me lots of peace. So number one, you got to embrace the mix. Number two, focus your fix. Drop it in the chat right now. Focus your fix. First, I embrace the mix. Second, I focus my fix. Now, well, here's what the Bible has to say about this. Colossians chapter three, verse two. This is a man named Paul writing here, the apostle Paul. And Paul says this, fix your mind on things above, not on earthly things. He's saying, get yourself a vertical fix of what you're thinking about rather than a horizontal fix, right? I'm looking upward. I'm fixing my mind on things above, not things horizontally, not things earthly, right? Let me give you another verse to back this up. Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Again, same guy writing. This is the apostle Paul. Interesting fact though, when the apostle Paul writes this verse in Philippians chapter four, verse eight, he's sitting in jail. He's sitting in prison for a crime he did not commit. So he has every reason to only look and fix his eyes on everything bad that happened in his past and is currently happening in his present. Yet this is what he says in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. And I'm reading from the message version, right? He says this, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true and noble and reputable and authentic and compelling and gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not to curse. What's he saying here? He's saying, fix your mind. He's saying, first, embrace the mix. That's number one. Number two, though, Focus your fix. Remember I said it earlier. You've got hundreds of problems. I know you do. I do too. But you've got thousands of blessings. 
For some of you, Christmas season, that's nothing for you to look forward to. You can't wait until it's over and, and you haven't even gotten to it yet. But you've got to choose to focus your fix and say, you know what? I'm going to think about what's true and what's noble and what's reputable and what's authentic and what's compelling and what's gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not to curse, right? Now, now listen, this, this one's actually really hard. Like, like when I say to you, focus your fix, this, this might be the hardest thing for you out of all that I'm going to say in this short little message here. Because negative, I like being negative, thinking negative, saying negative, speaking negative, like negative is easy, right? I mean, negative is just, for me at least, it's easy. It's natural. Like, like default bad thinking habits for me are negative. Worst case scenario, it's never going to happen. It's always going to be bad. Things are always going to turn out the wrong way for me. Like negative is easy, right? And, 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 and in your life, you, you might agree with this, right? Like in your life, negative might not only be easy for you, but it's kind of easy for everyone around you too. Like, like teachers tend to focus on what you did wrong or, or what question you got wrong, right? Um, your coach, if you're an athlete, right? Your coach tends to focus on what you did wrong and what you need to do better at, right? In fact, uh, like sociologists, they did they did a study of this and they discovered that most of life is a negative to positive ratio of eight to one. That means there's eight times more negative thinking in your life than positive. This is this is why it's hard, right? It's, it's why you have to decide, oh, man, I'm, I'm not just gonna embrace the mix and just own the fact that life is going to have good and bad in it, but I'm going to learn how to. I'm going to train my mind to focus my fix. I'm, I'm going to fix my focus. You could say it either way, right? You could say focus your fix. You could say fix your focus, right? Again, one more verse for this, because the Apostle Paul, in, the, in a different book of the Bible, he says it like this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. He says this, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Here's the key. We take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Now, now what does that mean? Most of the time we think that means take captive the bad thoughts, right? Like, oh, there's a bad thought. Like, grab that, right? Right? I'm, I'm holding this ball and I'm thinking about like that movie like that has like the core memories in it, right? Like, I can't remember the movie, right? But some of you do. Like, type it in the chat right now if you do, right? Like, like it's a core memory. And like, oh, no, it's a bad core memory. Um, and that is what the verse means. It does mean that you take captive every, every, every negative thought and make it obedient to Christ. But guess what? It also means that you take captive every good thought, too. Like, hey, I've got a good thought. Hey, I'm full of peace. Hey, I'm full of joy. Hey, I'm full of happiness. I'm full of forgiveness, right? So take captive both. Take the bad, make it obedient to Christ. And take the good and hold on to it. That's how you, that's how you focus your fix, right? One more, one more here, right? Because three simple points, and hopefully you're writing them in the chat so you're encouraging yourself and you're encouraging one another, right? What did I say? I said, number one, you got to embrace the mix. It's always going to be good. It's always going to be some bad. That's just called life, right? And until you and I get to heaven, it ain't going to be any different here in this world, right? Number two, focus your fix, right? I got to focus my fix. I got to choose. I get to choose what I'm going to think about. Yes, I know it's hard and it's easy to be negative, but you have to learn how to focus your fix. And how do you do that? Number three, number three is going to get real practical on how you focus your fix. Here it is. Number three, nix the negative, nix the negative, right? I, I'm just, I'm just going to decide, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself to think about all of the stuff that I don't want to be thinking about all the stuff that makes me sad, all the stuff that makes me anxious, all the stuff that makes me depressed, everything that makes me scared and full of fear. The more I pour into that kind of thinking, the more I, I let that kind of thinking be like a playlist on Spotify on repeat, right? Like the more I allow that to happen over and over and over again, the more I'm just producing all of the junk inside of me that I don't really like anyways, right? The unhappiness, the bitterness, the pain, the fear, the, you know, like all of these things, like I'm just producing this stuff because I'm thinking about it over and over and over again. All right, let me, let me, 
Let me, let me help you think about this for a second, right? 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 Because because you guys are students, and and I know you're like I know you're really smart because you're a pa- part of Pastor Joe's youth ministry. So you wouldn't be part of his youth ministry if you weren't smart, right? So, kind of hypothetical thing here. If you had a pot of boiling water, if you had a pot of boiling water, and let's just say for the sake of this illustration that the water that's inside the pot that's boiling like those that's our thinking right that's like our emotions that's like that's like everything inside of us that rages full of fear or full of anxiety right or full of anger like whatever that dominant emotion might be for you in your life right now so let's just say that you are a pot of boiling water right okay now now hang with me here for a second right if i've got a pot of boiling water and it's on the stove and i want the water to stop boiling What options do I have in order to get said water to stop boiling, right? So here's a couple options, right? Um, Option number one, I could could throw some ice in it, right? And that will temporarily bring down the temperature of the boiling water. Now, now this is what you and I do in our life all the time because I'm full of anger. I'm, I'm, I'm full of resentment. I'm full of bitterness. I'm full of fear. I'm full of anxiety, right? I'm full of loneliness. So what do I do? I medicate. I self medicate. I, I jump on social. I, I drink whatever I need to drink. I grab whatever I need to do. I get whatever form of entertainment I need to have, right? So whatever media, you know, busyness, whatever I got to do, I just self-medicate and it gives me temporary relief from those emotions like ice would in boiling water. But ice isn't a long-term fix, is it? And neither is your self-medicating, right? So what options do I have to, to, to take the temperature of the water down? Well, if, if the pot has a lid on it, I could like, I could kind of crack the lid, right? And then the steam will escape, right? So I got to blow off some steam. I got to, I got to vent a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Now, this is what you and I do in our life too. Whenever we're dealing with a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of negative feelings and emotions, right? I'll just go vent. I'll just go yell about it. I'll just go act out on someone else. I'll just treat someone else poorly, right? And it works for a little bit, but eventually... The, the boiling water of all of my negativity and all of my emotions comes up again. What else could I do to get the pot of boiling water to stop boiling? I could walk up to the stove and turn off the source of heat, right? I could turn it off, right? And what would that do? It would cause the water to stop boiling. That's what you're doing. And that's what I'm doing when I embrace the mix and when I focus my fix, and then I nix the negative. The negative is that it's that flame on the stove that's like lighting everything up inside of me. And so I'm just like, no, 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 I got to nix the negative. Think of it like this, right? If you've ever been like at camp, right? Or you've ever been at a friend's house and they maybe they live like out in the woods or something and they got like, or maybe just even your friend's house, they got like a little fire pit in the backyard, right? And you kind of got a little fire there on like a cold night and you, you know, fire is awesome, but you're still wrapped up in a blanket. And someone comes and they throw a piece of wood on the fire and sparks just kind of go flying everywhere, right? And some some sparks fly on your blanket. Like what do you what do you just naturally do? You're like, you just like flick the, you just like you're like, oh, get that off. You flick it off, right? That's what you have to do in your thinking. That's what Paul was saying when he was saying, take captive every thought. You take captive the good thoughts and hold on to them. And you take captive the bad thoughts by getting rid of them, by nixing the negative, by saying, you know what? I'm, I'm just getting rid of that. I'm not even going to do that. Now, now here's, here's just a small little practical tip for you, right? You can't always delete the negative thinking, so you have to replace it. And that's why Paul, again, is saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, he's saying, take captive. And that's why he's saying in, in Colossians 3, 2, fix your thinking, right? And that's why he's saying in Philippians 4, 8, set your thoughts on, think about what's true, what's right, what's noble, what's good, right? He's telling you, you can't always just delete a negative thought, right? You, like, like you can't just say, okay, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to think about it. Like you have to replace that. Okay. I'm going to prove this to you real quick. Cause some of you are not even, not even sure. So again, whatever platform you're watching on right now, you're watching on Insta, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever, whatever you're doing right now, whatever's happening, don't think about no, whatever you can think about anything you want to think about right now, but you cannot under any circumstances, think about cute puppy dogs, like 
Don't do it. Don't think about cute puppy dogs. Don't think about how cute and cuddly they are. Like, especially when you buy them and they're only like eight weeks old. Don't think about how they cuddle with you in the blanket. Don't think about those little floppy ears and that little wet nose that you like so much. Don't think about all those little colors and spots. Don't think about it. I'm thinking about anything else you want to, but don't think about cute puppy dogs. Like, that's impossible, right? Like, you can't just not think about something, especially when someone's telling you to think about it or to not think about it, right? So what, what you have to do is you have to replace it, right? You, you have to choose to say, oh, if I don't want to think about the negative, what should I do? I should think about the positive. See, that's what I want you to do during Christmas season this year, especially for those of you that are like, man, Christmas is kind of hard for me. I don't want you to think about all of the reasons why it's negative. I'm not telling you to ignore the fact that there's bad in your life. I'm not telling you to act like nothing bad has ever happened to you. I'm just telling you to fix your mind on things above. What are the things above? That's the blessing I have in God. That's the favor that's been spoken over me. That's the peace that comes from Jesus and only from Jesus. That's the joy that is my strength, according to the book of Nehemiah, right? That's the fact that I'm forgiven. That's the fact that I'm saved. That's the fact that Jesus loved me so much that he called me his beloved son, and he calls you his beloved son or his beloved daughter. That's the fact that Jesus said, you belong to me, and your name was pulled from eternity, and it was carved into the palm of my hand, and from within eternity. I have loved you with an everlasting love. See, these are the blessings that I'm going to choose to hold on to, especially during this season, and especially at the end of 2020, maybe the most challenging year we've ever had in history. But I'm going to choose to do what? Embrace the mix and focus my fix and nix the negative. Let me pray for you real quick right? Let me pray for you. And I know you're just you're sitting there and you're watching on a phone or you're watching on a device, but let me just pray for you real. God, I pray that every single student who's watching, every adult who's watching right now, God, I pray that the power of your word that we have to take every thought captive and to fix our eyes on things above and to choose what is true and right and noble and pure, what is beautiful and not ugly and what is good and not bad. God, I pray that during this Christmas season, you would help us to embrace the mix and focus our fix and nix the negative. In your name I pray, amen. Y'all, it's been fun hanging out with you on this video. Pastor Joey, thanks for giving me a chance to share with your amazing students and your amazing adults and maybe even some of your parents that were watching in tonight. Um, hopefully, I'll be back to Illinois sometime soon because I'd love to hang out with you guys in person. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll see if we can make that happen, especially once all this quarantine stuff is done. But man, I love you guys. I still think fondly of all of our incredible memories at camp a couple summers ago. And I know at some point we'll see each other. If you want to reach out to me, give me a shout out on uh, Instagram at Aaron Holt, E-R-A-N-H-O-L-T to send me a message. I'd love to connect with you. And I pray that you have an incredible Christmas. God bless everybody. <laughs>